one, setting up for success. All right, so buckle up. Let's get started on this. I am using a KH940. Uh, the book I have is a KH930. It's just the one that I picked up first. I'm not going to change it. We're going to go through the setup of this machine. We're going to uh, string the tension rod. And we're going to talk about the panel. And that'll be it for um, the first video. The second video we will get into knitting. If that makes any sense. We're going to walk through this entire book. All 167 pages, give or take, and we will um, try and get you guys knitting on this KH940 and a KH930 because they are twins. Fraternal, but still twins. And I think it's important that you could not be scared of this wonderful 1990s, 1980s technology. And, uh, yeah, we're also going to go through the accessories. So stay tuned. We are starting the bulk of this video in two seconds. Did I forget to mention that I've actually never looked at this book? I really should have said that to start with. So we have how to use your knitting machine, how to program, floppy disk drive, pattern knitting, making garments. Pretty easy. Useful hints. Okie dokie. Oh, and here we go. How to use your knitting machine. Parts, names, machine, and K-carriage. Okay, as you can see, my setup is similar to how they have it set up in this picture. So we have your needle bed. These are your needles. These are your gate pegs. There's needle position indicator. That would probably be the number strip. Uh, rear rail. That's this thing back here that the garter carriage rides on. Uh, this is your K carriage. This is your um, normal hold and intarsia button. And the holding cam. Oh, there's a right here. If you don't have this on, and then you can push this all the way over, and that engages your intarsia. Um, these are your cam buttons. This is your feeder. You have feeder A and feeder B. There's a yarn feeder lever, which is this thing. I guess mine is actually missing its little nubby, which is okay. I'm sure, it's somewhere. Uh, these are your weaving and tuck knobs. You need to engage those when uh, you're doing weaving or tuck. Uh, this is your sinker plate assembly. This is your tension dial. This is your power switch. That's your turn mark. There's another one on the other side of the machine over here. Uh, this is your row counter tripper. This is your knit leader tripper. Mine currently has my uh, design and knit tripper on it. Um, change knob right here. This is your carriage handle. Uh, cam button release lever. I already went over the knit, knit leader tripper. This is your operation panel. When I go to describe the operation panel, I will uh, zoom in so you guys can actually see what's going on there. Um, I don't think we need to discuss the lid at all. That's just silly. Let's go to page two. Okay, operation panel. Let's zoom in. All right, so this is our operation panel. When we start on the left-hand side of the page... It mentions the S and the R, which is the stitch number key and the row number key. This is your garter carriage indicator. 
These are your selectors one and two, all over and centered. This is your display. This is the yellow lamp. This is the green lamp. This is your memo or memo display. Of course, ready lamp, pattern number lamp, quantity lamp, position lamp. This is your M key, start key, yellow key, green key, step key, CE key. Uh, no. CR key, up key, down key, 10 keys. You at the back of this little thing here is a volume dial. So you can actually turn down the volume of this machine so you can knit a little bit quieter, which kids really appreciate. These are your data keys. So when you're inputting your own pattern, you have black and white. Uh, we have left and right keys. We have an input key. Check key. Mimo key. Now, we press the Mimo key when we use a garter carriage. That one I know. This is the C key. We use the C key so that we can enter a pattern from a floppy drive, image to track, or DAC. We have the... KCR, which we use for Jacquard. KHC, which we use for um, reversing the colors. So if you're um, also using the single bed color changer, that's the button you're supposed to use. Apparently. We'll see if I'm right. This is the upside down key, so it flips your image. This is the double length key, so you can make things taller. This is the number three is the double width key, so you can make them twice as wide. This is the mirror image key, so if you push it, your image is flipped sideways. If that makes any sense. And then you have the reverse key. Now, to me, number two and number one seem awfully darn similar. So when we get to learning about these two keys, that's going to be a new one for me, too. Oh, now we're at the accessories. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera and we'll come back and talk about those. So this set of pages talks about everything you should have got with a KH940 or KH930 right from the factory. So chances are, oops, look at me go. You would have got a Stitch World book. Hang on, I'm just going to get mine out here. Stitch World book. This instruction manual. Your tension rod, which is over here. You would have got a cast on comb which has two parts and a little metal connector. You would have got your extension rails, power cord, lace carriage. This page is everything that is usually lost, stripped, or broken when you get a used machine. So you may or may not have got a crochet hook. I never got one with this machine. I bought my own off Am uh, AliExpress. A latch tool. Okay, latch tool. Transfer tools. Well, I got this one, but I have others. Here's another one. Uh, yeah, I don't know where the other one is. One of these days I'll find it. No big deal. Normally you have a single prong, single prong, double, triple, and then a triple, double. I tend to lose this triple-double because I don't do a lot of cables. Needle pusher. 
this one is pretty awesome. Um, this is not the one that comes with the machine. But if you ever get one, it's actually got tall enough slots so that you can actually push needles through each other. Instead of the short one, which I have put away because I hate it, that you can only push the needle butts. So, this one, if you can get a square one, get a square one. You can actually just push them through. It's, you know, one of those nice bonus pieces. Uh, cast on thread. That's also known as Ravel Cord. Uh, I rarely ever use it. And, um, to date I've got one machine that actually had it with it. Tapestry needle. Well, good luck if you got one with your machine. Spare needles. Rarely ever, because by the time you get a used machine, they're already been used. And chances are the, uh, person you bought your machine from already swapped them out and what you're getting for spare needles are actually dead ones. Joyous of joys. Now, a knitting machine does not come with ribber clamps. It comes with these ones. Right here. And in the manual, it does show you how to use them properly. If you do not have them, get them before you try and knit, please. Claw weights. A machine usually only comes with two claw weights. A and B. That's it. And you can do a lot with just those two claw weights. However, if you can get five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten of them, you'll be a lot happier. I guarantee. Um, okay. Cleaning brush, essential. I don't usually keep them with the machines that they belong to. I usually keep them in my uh, knitting box. Now, a plating feeder. Uh, chances are pretty good that if you have a used machine that that plating feeder has been lost or is currently on your machine instead of your regular feeder. Um, if the person had a ribber, Sometimes they uh, leave the plating feeder on the river because, believe it or not, you can put it on the river. That's that's another uh, technique that I found out about the other day. And yeah, we'll be going into that too. You're supposed to have a latch opening plate. Not sure exactly where that goes. I have a feeling it's probably on one of my ribbers, but not sure which one that is. Could be on here. I have no idea. Not a clue. Like I said, use machines, you get what you get, it's as is. Um, Lubricating oil, good luck. Probably won't get one. Yarn wax, in all the machines that I've had, and those who know me know I've had a lot of them. I've got containers for y yarn wax, but I very rarely ever get actual yarn, yarn wax. Pretty depressing. Carriage lock. Oh, those are so much fun. I've had one. And it wasn't even for a brother. So, yeah. This is what you get. Do you see a um, patterning device here? No. Do you see a rib transfer tool here? No. Those are not standard with these machines. Do you see a ribber on this page? No. Because again, that is not standard with your machine. All you get in the box is this first machine. The extension rails, the carriage, the tools, the tension mast. That's it. In a nutshell, that's all you got. Now we're going to go into setting up the machine. So I'm going to reposition the camera and we will go after the setup. Okay, so the first thing we see when it says setting up your machine is that we put 
our machine with the lid on on our surface whether it's a desk metal stand doesn't matter you put it on flat and you open up the lid and you open up this little toolbox i haven't touched this toolbox since i got it as you can see there's nothing in it but inside of it should have been all of my tools all of the toys the brushes the oils everything fits inside this little toolbox unless you were buying a second-hand machine and it's been stripped bare so it's it's a pretty little cover for me i'm going to reposition the camera so you can see where the clamps are supposed to go so the first thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take this little clamp here and you actually put it in that slot there on a flat surface if you're not using a ribber we are keeping the ribber on the machine so I use the ribber clamps but we still use the same slots both sides secure it to the table before you do anything else if you don't secure it to the table you're going to have a very bad day now we're going to reposition we're going to talk about the next part you know <clears throat> Okay, so this is the carriage lock from my other machine. That would normally be here. We would now disconnect it. And now our carriage is free. And then we would grab our um, sinker plate assembly and move it off the machine a little bit. Connect the assembly using the little knots. And we're golden. La la la. And the handle is normally down. Move it up. Golden. Now we would do the tension mask, which is right here. So I'm going to take my tension mask. Well, I'm going to show you a tension mask. And we'll put it on the machine. So as usual, I'm going to reposition the camera. And you guys can see the tension mast. Sometimes if you're lucky, your tension mast is in two parts. So you got the long rod with the yarn separator. And then you have the head. Now, I'm just going to put the head to the side. And uh, depending on which way you want your thing to go, you can move it this way. Or this way. You can loosen this screw. And you can adjust this up or down. It doesn't matter. If you like your uh, yarn holders up or down. It's your call. There is no law saying you have to have it either way. There is a little catch here. So you'd have to take it all the way up. Or all the way down you can also move it uh, sideways and get it over those little locking clips your call like I said there's no law no one's gonna come knock on your door if you do it your way you put it in the little slot and it locks in the keyhole now my nemesis When you get these um, tension mast heads, I always call them the grasshopper. Nice and compact. Yes, yeah, so pretty. Please pay attention to your manual on how you're supposed to adjust it. Okay? So you hang on to it here. You're lifting here. Lift. Okay? It's as far as it goes. That, that, that's it. Don't go any further. You then take the antenna of the grasshopper. And you move them up until they lock. That's it. Don't force it any further. Don't break these. Okay? There's not an infinite supply of these things. And that this goes on the other key lock on the other side of the masthead. And it locks into place. 
Next up on the list is our extension rails. These things. I got to adjust the camera yet again so that you can see where they go. So these extension rails fit into these slots here. There's a hole here and a bracket here. Into the hole, into the bracket, gentle push. Uh, some older people have left these extension rails on their machines indefinitely and have rested their carriages on them and walked away for months. As you can see, my extension rails are bowed. So my extension rails are actually broken. Um, when I am knitting with my garter carriage, I actually have supports on my metal stand and if I'm working on a desk on my desk that actually hold these up so that they are in the position where they need to be for lace work and garter carriage work especially with the lace carriage you want that thing to to be flat like to actually be on the rails properly so that you don't get mispatterning or you don't accidentally move the carriage off of the main bed like so it doesn't misalign i think that's pretty clear all right the next thing that it touches on is plugging it in you don't plug it in until you have everything else done in case you have to shift things over so you plug it in and you're ready to knit your machine is now set up the only word of caution in this book Page eight is for the love of God, do not leave this machine out in direct sunlight because it is ancient technology. It does not take heat well. I keep my machines in an ice cold basement. Electronics love cold. They don't like warm. So in the cold, dark basement, perfect hot sunroom you're not going to have a very good knitting day just so we're clear try and make sure that the room is cool and that the machine does not actually get direct sunlight next up we're, we are going to thread this tension mast 